Warning, the following context may include scary sequences of light horror and many thrills. Some gruesome descriptions involving children may be present in some chapters. Some material may be unsettling to certain audiences. But don't worry, everything will be okay. Probably. Chapter 17. I Hate Spiders. Danny's Perspective. The sweat on my hands wells in my palms, but I won't let go of her. She's lost quite a bit of blood, so I don't want her passing out again. Tori refuses to be carried, stubborn as always. She claims she's fine, but whenever she's not looking, I peek down to make sure my shirt is still tied tightly around her arm. Aren't you cold? She asks, gesturing to my lack of clothing. No. I say, shaking my head. The walking is keeping me warm. Hmm. She stares back down at the ground. Maybe I'm cold because I lost so much blood. A humorous chuckle escapes her mouth. I know she's just trying to make light of the situation, but she's not stupid. She's not in good shape. I can hear the exhaustion in each deep sigh. Her body needs rest. Stop worrying, Tori tells me, not even lifting her gaze. I really am okay, just tired. And injured, but I'm not going to die from a cut. You could, blurts out of my mouth before I can stop it. It it could get infected. I bite my lip. Tori looks up at me, wide-eyed and scared. Well, that's not comforting, she says, scrunching her eyebrows together. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry, I say, grabbing her shoulders and stopping her. I'm just really worried. I can't keep almost losing you. It's my job to protect you. I'm the big brother. It's up to me to make sure that you get home. Danny, stop. She grabs my arms. It's not your fault. None of this is. It's not your responsibility to get me home. We are all here because of a crazy curse and we need to work together to escape. You can't do this alone. And with that, I let her go. She's right. As much as I'd like it to be all up to me, it's not. We do have to help each other. I'm sorry. I say again, this time calmly. I'm not good at letting others take the lead. I just really want to keep you safe. And I know she understands where this comes from. She's grown up with me being the oldest boy in the house, having to learn how to fill the role my father left when he passed. Thank you. And I want to keep you safe too, she tells me with a smile. We'll take care of each other. She pats me firmly on the shoulder and turns to begin walking again. The path becomes shaded as more and more trees cover the trail. The cornfield has turned into a forest, yet the path continues. The map says that we need to keep going, so despite the stone in my stomach warning me of inevitable doom, we continue. So, Tori begins, we're looking for a dream catcher? What color? I pause, pulling the piece of paper out of my backpack, being careful not to damage the broomstick that is tied to the strap. It just says the web dream catcher, so I'm not sure. Webbed? As in spider webs? Tori says, glaring at me. I try to give her an apologetic smile. I didn't want to tell you right away and psych you out. She continues to glare at me. Tori isn't afraid of many things, but she hates spiders. What kind of forest are we getting into exactly? She crosses her arms, waiting for my answer. I close my eyes as I answer. It's called Spiderweb Alley. Nothing but silence. And I know she's already coming up with a plan to murder me. Daniel! She yells, and I know she's mad. How could you keep something like that a secret? Also, couldn't you send someone else here? I peek my eyes open. She's still glaring. I'm sorry. They had already chosen who would go where. They said this was probably the best route for us. How could sending the youngest one of us to a child-eating witch and spiders be best? She throws her hands in the air. That makes no sense. And now that she mentions it, it doesn't really make sense. Ratiti and Chip in on this curse all along? Okay, I say softly, trying to calm her anxiety. Maybe we won't even run into any spiders. And hey, maybe they're nice. I cringe at my own words the moment they exit my mouth. Sure, 
she says dully. Friendly spiders we won't run into. That's totally likely. The path grows darker and darker the further we go. The trees have become so dense that the cornfield is nowhere to be seen. For this place being called Spiderweb Alley, it doesn't appear to show signs of spiders living here. Ew, Tori shrieks, yanking something from her hair. It looks like a thick, sticky white rope, like a web, only huge. I guess I can jinx things with my thoughts now. That's, I evaluate the web more thoroughly. As thick as a jump rope. Tori struggles to pull all of the leftover pieces out of her hair. Careful, I grab her left arm, lowering it gently. Don't use it too much. Let me help. She rests her arms to her side and I begin de-threading webs from her hair. I want to keep moving, Tori says impatiently. My hair can wait. Let's find this dream catcher and get out of here. Releasing her hair, I offer my hand as we continue walking. One after another, webs can be seen in nearly every tree. Some of the webs are so massive that they can cover three or four trees alone. The wind picks up, sending a sharp whistling noise through the forest. Birds and bats fly away, startled by the sudden change in weather. With my right hand, I grip the strap of the backpack Titi gave me tightly, holding Tori close with my left. Wait, Tori says, lifting her head. Do you hear that? Closing my eyes, I listen closely, trying to block out the obnoxious whistling. Ding, dong, ding, clink, dong. A clinking of little musical notes echo off the trail. That could be the dream catcher, Tori says, jumping out of my grasp. Some dream catchers have little wind chimes on them. Okay, let's follow the noise before the wind stops, I say, and we run into the woods. Avoiding broken branches and dodging webs strung through the trees, Tori and I chase the direction of the sound. I think it's getting louder, she says, looking back for my opinion. I think so, I nod, gesturing for her to keep going. The wind seems to be dying down slightly. With a huge gasp, Tori jumps, clapping her hands together. There it is, she squeals, pointing to the black and white dream catcher strung up in a very tall tree. It had to be the tallest tree here, didn't it? I say, scratching my head as I look for a way up. Here, just lift me up, Tori tells me, reaching her hands in preparation. Uh, no, I say, pointing to her injured arm. You can't climb right now. She puts her arms down, wincing at the pain she forgot she had. Right, Tori rubs her arms softly, readjusting the shirt tied around it. I guess we're going to have to get you up there. I circle the tree, looking for any possible way up. An oddly shaped branch bends, creating a snapping sound, yet it stays intact. I jump back, placing my arm in front of Tori. What? What happened? Tori questions me, tugging at my arm. Shh! I shush her, waving my hand in her face. With one finger, I point upward, seeing now what we've missed all along. Oh my, I cover Tori's mouth before she can say another word, or scream. Many of what appeared to be branches were not branches, but legs. Creepy, crawly, incredibly huge spider legs, resting at the top of the trees, nestled in leaves were countless spiders. They seemed to be sleeping, or at the very least, unbothered. I was not about to be the one to bother them. I could feel Tori shaking in my arms, trying to compose herself. If I had it my way, we'd leave instantly, but I know we still need to get the dream catcher. I turn towards Tori, slowly crouching down. You stay here, I whisper. I'm going to climb up carefully and hopefully not disturb them. She shakes her head. No, you have to stay here, she begs. You'll die. I raise a finger to my mouth. No, I say. I won't. She gives me an angered glare. Okay, fine. I'll try not to, I say, being more realistic this time. But if they all wake up, you run like crazy and don't look back. You promise me? I can't, I cut her off. Promise me, Tori, please. Fine, she says, her lips beginning to pout, trying to hold back tears. Okay, now stay here, I tell her and head to the tree trunk. It's awfully large and there are no branches low enough to grab. 
Looking back up at the dream catcher, I notice that it hangs next to the branches from the tree next to it, which has a branch just close enough to the ground that I can grab. Hoisting myself up, I'm able to get myself into the tree. Knowing that some of these branches could actually be legs is absolutely terrifying. One at a time, I look closely at the branch, scanning for movement before grabbing it. I peek down. Tori is still standing there, watching my every move. Finally, I reach the height of the dream catcher. However, the branches that reach it are too thin to hold me. If I could knock it down with something, then I could have Tori catch it. I look for a loose branch, one long enough to hit the dream catcher. Luckily, there is one not too far from my reach. The only thing is, I'll have to break it off, and that would be loud. My mind races, struggling to find a solution. Should I think of something else? Should I just break it off quickly and knock the dream catcher off as fast as I can? Should I tell Tori to look for something on the ground? I can feel the sweat building up on my forehead. I know that time is running out and I'm not sure how long the spiders will stay asleep. Making as little noise as possible, I wave to Tori and gesture for her to stand underneath the dream catcher. She tiptoes over, careful not to step on anything that could be loud. Little does she know I'm about to make a lot of noise. With one deep inhale, I close my eyes and count to three. One, two, three. Grabbing the branch, cracking it abruptly, and stretching it out to the dream catcher, I feel the shuddering of leaves from trees throughout the entire forest. I hear the twists and turns of spiders behind me. With as much strength as possible, I shove the branch forward, knocking the dream catcher off the tree. I watch as Tori catches it, looks around, and screams. Like moths to a light bulb, hundreds of beady eyes focus on her. Tori! I shout. Run! I turn to climb down the tree, but stop the moment I see eight black eyes staring at me. The bristly hairs prick out of its mangled face like spikes on a cactus. Its legs and bodies twist in ungodly ways, molding itself to the tree. The high-pitched, gurgling sound coming from its mouth is that of nightmares, the head turns, opening its mouth, bearing two sharp fangs. My initial reaction is freezing. How could I not? I have absolutely no idea what to do with a giant spider. Should I run? Should I stand my ground? Ah! Tori's voice wakes me from my state. Danny, let's go! She yells, looking around anxiously as hundreds of spiders make their way to her. I don't have much of a choice, so I turn around and jump. Grabbing onto branches to break my fall, I stumble to the ground. Immediately, Tori yanks me to my feet and we take off. Dodging webs and jumping over logs, we sprint as fast as we possibly can, which is easy to do when you're being chased by giant spiders. The trees shudder from the weight of the spiders crawling through the forest. Looking back, I see nothing but jagged black legs and creepy eyes. Hundreds of them. Keep going, I yell, ducking under a branch. Danny, Tori yells, and it sounds distant. I turn and see she's tripped into a spider web that has been set between two logs. Racing back to her, I keep my eyes peeled for any spiders that might pop out. I grab her hands and try to pull her, but her leg is tangled pretty badly. Danny, look out! Tori screams, pointing above me. Before I can react, I'm pinned to the ground. The spider begins to web my legs together. In a panic, I look for something nearby that I can grab. Wrestling my fingers through the dirt, I feel a firm stick. Yanking it from the ground, I force it through the spider's head. Blood and goo splatters and drips on my face and chest. The spider shrieks in pain and falls over. Oh my gosh, Tori exclaims. But there's more, so get me out of here. I use the stick to peel off the little bit of web on my feet. Rushing to Tori, I use the stick to detach her from the web as well. Duck, I yell and stab another spider in the head. Tori stands back up and takes my hand. The two of us run and run until we see the cornfield again. My chest pounds and my head is dizzy, but we made it out, right? I look down and see the stick in my right hand and look to my other side and see Tori's bracelet in my left hand. My stomach drops and twists in ways I didn't know possible. Tori! I scream, searching in every direction. We made it out. We made it out. I swear we made it out. Chapter 18. I Can Tell Your Future. Martha's Perspective. Tune in tomorrow.